Here's to whiskey kisses, the peaty taste of sin. Greetings, whiskey folk. It is a fantastic time to be alive because we are about to finally have the second Blackadder snake pit. Roll the video. As I shall be known from now on. Blackadder. Now, um, you've probably never heard of Blackadder. I'll tell you why. That's because there's no coffee shop in England big enough for two Blackadders. Blackadder, slightly balmy, um, independent bottlers. They do lots of weird and wonderful things. Well, I started drinking at an early age, but um, that was generally milk in those days. I will pour a dram into a cream glass right now. of ginger maniacs with wild goats nesting in their huge orange beards, or to put it another way, the Scots. I got out the second one. Yeah, but we picked up black snake, we picked up red snake. So, for those of you who are new to Blackadder and are thinking, what is this madness? Hopefully the video well, it probably didn't explain anything, but it was at least kind of funny, maybe. I, I mean, it, it looked good. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Um, hopefully we don't get sued by Ron Atkinson. I'm sure he'll be he's, fine with it. He's got a sense of humor. Yeah. He's probably okay. Yeah. We, we, I have put that disclaimer at the front, so, you know, we <laughs> just, just to make it absolutely clear, the Blackadder show has nothing to do with the Blackadder whiskey. Oh, both, both are fantastic. Though. Both fantastic. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we had the first ever Blackadder Snake Pit at the tail end of last year, and it went over really well. Yeah. People absolutely loved it. it. We have actually right here. It's uh, it had the number one rated whiskey in the entire Dram Association was the the crowning glory of that tasting. It's so good. There were so many of the great whiskeys. We had the. The, the, the Black Snake, which was the highest rated whiskey under 200 bucks, even mm -hmm. though it was only about 120, yep. which is nuts. And it disappeared immediately. Oh, it sold out at the tasting in Just like a few seconds. Go on. We are getting more. Uh, in fact, we're getting a different one too. Really? So that's, that's coming up yes. in, in uh, Snake Pit 3. Um, very, yeah. So it was a very neat tasting, but it was mostly an introduction on some of the different things that Blackadder does, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we had the Red Snake, the Black Snake, we had a Drop of the Irish. Ooh, yeah. Um, and we only actually had one of the raw cask, oh. of, their, of like their actual distillery bottlings. And I love the raw cask. The raw cask is cool. Um, so today's releases is actually five brand new raw casks. Mm -hmm. We decided to pull out all the stops for the second snake pit and make it uh, a bit of a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, this is a bit of a big deal. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean... It's, it's going to be cool. So one thing that we're also going to do, though, first is revisit something which uh, kind of got a little bit lost in the whole COVID situation. Something particularly special that I don't think Brett's tried yet. I have not. No. So I have, and you can watch my uh, full thoughts and reviews on these on episode one of Drinking Out Loud all the way back on the 21st of March. Oh, it's, it's being slid into shot. <laughs> this is something particularly exciting. So before we get into the five new raw casks, which I I can't wait to discover, I'm really looking forward to uh, to showing my uh, good friend here some really unique spirits. I'm excited. I've, I've sold through <laughs> a bunch of them and I've gotten the, the lowdown. I watched the video. Perfect. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to You're try them yet. You're all primed. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who haven't watched the video yet, um, I mean, if you're not watching this live, I actually recommend pausing right now, Ooh, going yeah. back, watching the uh, the full one hour of the Shizuoka video. Maybe not. Um, Can you put in that little like special icon in the top corner there? It just like links to the video. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, at the very least, I'll link at the end of this video. That's fair. Because um, most people are probably watching live, and you might not want to pause a live show and go watch something else because yeah. that would be weird. Um, of course, welcome to everyone in the live chat. It's, yes, it's good to see you. I I just realized we got a little carried away here. Like, I'm so excited by the whole Blackadder thing. Introducing Blackadder, we didn't introduce we didn't, ourselves. Yeah, or the show. Yeah. yeah. 
Whoops. So this is the Blackadder show. No. Um, this is... <laughs> I'm Rowan Atkins. Wait. No. <laughs> I'm Baldrick. Uh, oh. I am bald. Yeah, there we go. It, it works. Yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm season three because I got the beard this time. Uh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That works. Um, so, yes. This is Drinking Out Loud, which is the official Drama Association sort of YouTube um release show slash conversation show mm -hmm. um we are lucky enough that uh we are now able to have two people on this show it's yeah um it's we, nice. we trialed this with the snwx outturn and honestly um it's it's nice having having I, a sounding board and i to talk miss to and... talking whiskey yeah i think that was the you don't key. do enough of it in the store with i customers? mean i i do but i don't do enough of it with whiskey in my hand oh that is a good point yeah that so is a very good point that's very important yeah that is that is an important part yeah. of it speaking of which let's get some whiskey in your yes um yes. so yes drinking out loud um the official dram association youtube show and uh, a lot of you are thinking what the hell is the dram association we are a whiskey club based here at the straff ale wine and spirit merchants i can't open this bloody thing do you want to try yeah sure uh based at the straff ale wine and spirit merchants in victoria british columbia in canada first time of course Show yeah off. please yeah all right <laughs> um and it's important that i mention that we're in the straff victoria british columbia canada because this is particularly cool now we didn't know this and we didn't have this information at all at the time but we are actually the global exclusive retailer for this product oh that's so good to hear right um you can't get this anywhere else in the world and that's that's neat uh this is actually a triple pack of spirits from the shizuoka distillery which is a new distillery in japan Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it has a pretty big link with Blackadder because it was started by uh, a guy called Taiko Nakamura, who is the owner of Gaia Flow Imports. Mm. Um, and that's the company that brings Blackadder into uh, Japan. Oh, cool. And Blackadder is massive in Japan. They have their own range of whiskey that's Japanese exclusive. They, it's one of their biggest markets. Um, so Robin Tuchek, who, uh, who you know, created and owns Blackadder, is, is really, you know, really well regarded, highly regarded and well loved in the Japanese whiskey community. Um, and so uh, Blackadder have the incredible honor of being able to bottle some of the Shizuoka spirit, which has only just been released as a single malt uh, earlier this year, I think, in Japan. Um, and this is a really cool, geeky, nerdy set. I and it was made specifically for the BC market. Um, and at the time, we thought that was going to be for both us and Legacy in mm -hmm. Vancouver. Uh, but Legacy have unfortunately dropped out of uh, the Blackadder partnership. So currently, we are the only store in the entire province doing Blackadder. Just us, baby. Just us. We're, we're all on our own. I'm not going to start singing it. Yeah. Oh, no, you're, no, you okay. started. I started. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. Um, we are partnering with another store on the mainland later this year. Oh, the, secrets. The, we secrets, secrets. Industry Secrets. Um, that is in the works, so uh, uh, that that is going to be happening later on. But for now, at least, and we're, we're probably going to be sold out of this by the time the other store jumps on board with Blackadder. Mm -hmm. I might save a couple of cases, but mm -hmm. for a very least now until the fall, we are the only place in the world where you can buy these whiskeys, which is or say whiskey spirits actually, because mm -hmm. they're not whiskeys. You can Specific. probably tell from a couple of them that they're definitely not whiskeys. Yeah. Um, so yes, Shizuoka, brand new distillery, it was started by Taiko Nakamura, who uh, went on a bit of a whiskey pilgrimage to Isle, uh, came back and decided to um, create uh, Japanese whiskey in a more traditional Scottish style. Basically doing exactly the same as what uh, Masataka Takatsuru did, mm -hmm. but 100 years later, um, which is really cool. And uh, one of the things that he did uh, is very similar to what uh, Mas uh, Masataka did, and that is um, have a distillery which is direct fired. Ooh. So uh, Nika, of course, Masataka Takatsuru's company that he founded, uh, started off with the Yoichi Distillery, which is one of the, I think, the only distillery in the world now that's just coal-fired stills. Yep. These guys, they didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to piss off Nika because that would be a bad move. Yeah, of course. They didn't want to jump into their territory, but they are doing a direct fired still. They've Very got nice. three different types of stills, um, and so this is one of them that we're going to explore first, and that is wood-fired. And it's a traditional Scottish style still. It's actually a Forsyth still, which are the creators of some of the best stills in the world, including Shelter Points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Um, right. Is that the wood fired? It's the, uh, no, uh, that's, it's that's the, the other one. Yeah. We that's want this one. one. Alrighty. Cool. There you go. You have the honor. Okay. He's closest to the microphone. So if you want a satisfying part, then it's all about Brett these days. 
my popping days are over, but I can still go. Oh, oh cheat. Go. Oh. Ooh. That's a, that's a tight <laughs> that cork. Was, that was a tight cork, yeah. That was, yeah. That was interesting. I haven't actually opened one of these before because I've had my uh, my own sample. Oh, yes. Here, which is in a different shaped bottle if you caught uh, episode one. I love the shape of these bottles. They're really cool. They're They're like, just... They feel like uh, scientific. Yes, that's what yeah. we're doing. Science. Yes. Welcome to the science show. <laughs> um, oh, God, that is a solid bottle. Right, put that one up front for right now. Yeah. Ooh. Cool. Now, oh. I was thinking about going back and re-watching episode one myself to, to make myself you know, think think about the flavors that I found before. But honestly, I thought it was probably better to start with a clean canvas again, because I, my memories have shot for the last couple of months. There's quite a lot going on, as you might know. Um, so I can't actually remember what my tasting nose, nosing notes were for these. Um, yeah. So I'm going to rediscover them right now with, alongside Brett. This is really cool. I got a ton of honeydew melon. Honeydew melon. Just, oh, I like just that. Just a ton of it. Yeah? Mmm. It's, yeah, it, it does have a, a fruity sweetness yeah. on, on the lighter side of fruits, more yeah. summer summer fruits. Maybe a little citric, but I don't know. Yeah, lemon, lime, lime, yeah. lime maybe. Although that might be last night's margarita. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's... Lime, lime peel. Yeah. Yeah. A little peppery. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping right in. Oh, go for it. Yeah. Um, I should warn you, though, that this is presented not at cask strength, because it's never been in a cask, but at 63%. Oh, all right. So this is new make spirit. So for those who aren't familiar with that term, that is what whiskey is before it's whiskey. Um, this is straight off the still. It's single malt. It's doing that cold, uh, sorry, wood-fired still. Um, but this is what whiskey looks like before it goes into a cask. It's, yeah basically single malt vodka in a sense but it's so much more than that mm. whereas vodka is all about trying to make a a really clean clear spirit with not much flavor this is all about retaining as much flavor as possible so that when it then goes into the cask those flavors integrate with the flavors coming from the oak yeah and even at that high percentage it's smooth mm. I, that, yeah i haven't gone back into the taste yet but this no, it, the nose is captivating and that, that, oh, that's, yeah, I'll admit. It's... That's one of the things I mentioned, I do remember mentioning in episode one, is that it's a great sign of a new make, not only when you are excited to see what's going to happen to it in the future, but you actually enjoy it as it is. Um, and I don't often find myself enjoying new makes. I've tried a dozen or so different uh, Scottish new makes in my time, and hopefully I'm going to be trying a whole lot more when I finally do my mm -hmm. now uh, delayed tour of Scotland. But... Yeah, they're, they're not always great. Like some, some whiskey, which is like absolutely stunning down the line, starts off a little bit weird um, and not particularly palatable. This, this is, this is just wild. Ooh, praline. Oh yeah, there you go. Mm, like those um, seashells, those Belgian chocolate seashell shaped ones. Yeah, I was, I was thinking just like a, a candied wafer of some sort but mm. yeah mm -hmm. pralines, pralines like a, a great little yeah candied wafer it's like a kinder bueno oh yeah there mm. you go <laughs> <laughs> this is the kinder not, bueno of new make spirit not, not a lot of bad chocolate coating but you know what i think it that's that's good yeah that, yeah that's good so i think we should do a direct side by side of this with the other white spirit oh, uh, yeah. in, in this trilogy and that is a particularly exciting one because Shizuoka, whilst it is a very, very new distillery, only started uh, a few years ago, um, four years ago, I think. I probably should have written that down in my notes, but I think it was about four years ago. Um, they've just released a three-year-old whiskey, so that gives you an idea of how, how new they are. Um, they actually have some huge heritage kudos in their equipment because they managed somehow, some way, to buy the stills from the legendary Kuruazawa distillery. Yeah, I'm reading that name on here. Yeah. That's, wow. It's weird, right? It's weird holding a bottle that says Kuruazawa. Yeah. It's it's still strange. All right, let's, let's try this cork too. Ooh, nice. No, that's that's, that's little, better, yeah. that's better. It's a very different sound coming off this shape of bottle and cork. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's strange that you really gotta, you really gotta pull on it, which is mm. fine. Just give it a nice sharp tug. It's good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Kurosawa, normally if you want to hold a bottle that says Kurosawa in your hand, it means you've just dropped a down payment on a two-bedroom house. Um, yeah. Really, I, I'm honestly, that's actually a thing. Like, normally five figures for a Kurosawa these days. 
which is horrifying. Uh, so being able to try one, not actually a Kurosawa whiskey, but made to the same specs and in the same equipment, um, the new make spirit that would hopefully, theoretically, in a few years' time, turn out very much like Kurosawa. Yeah. That is really, really exciting. Just think of this as a really, really early home investment. But hmm. it's too early. Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, it's <a> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. But it's super, like... New Make Spirit, uh, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but for, for whiskey fanatics and whiskey fans, especially Japanese whiskey fans, this is an absolutely one-of-a-kind, unique experience. To be able to do this any other way would be to go to a grand tasting at a masterclass somewhere mm -hmm. in the world where they happen to be presenting it, or by going to the distillery in Japan. And this is this will save you a lot in airfare. Plus, you can't really travel right now, and yes, festivals yes. aren't really happening either. Exactly. So this is really the only way you can do this. Um, it's just super, super geeky. Yeah. And I freaking love it. This is, this is great. Now, this is where I get a ton of like sweetness and a lot mm. more like a succulent kind of fruit. Definitely more sweet today. I'm, the fruit I'm getting on this is like really, really, maybe slightly overripe, maybe even bruised apricots. See, I like apricot. The one that came to my mind was kiwi. Kiwi? Oh yeah. It is quite acidic. Yeah. yeah there is yeah. like a bitey... Yeah, no, I get, you know that when you bite into a big chunk of kiwi, it kind of feels like it's stabbing your tongue with tiny needles. Mm -hmm, Definitely mm -hmm. a little bit of that. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So I'm guessing it's not it's not cask strength because there's no cask in the yeah. uh, 63, was it? Yes. They're they're all, I think they're all the same. They're all, they're yeah. all 63%. Um, I'm guessing that must be their filling strength. Yeah, I suppose. It's probably because you, you generally don't put the whiskey straight off the still into a cask mm -hmm. um, for consistency, but also for, you know, flavor reasons. Yeah. You generally water it down to a specific ABV before you put it in the cask. So my, I would assume that this is filling strength, although I'm not quite sure how that works with the last one, but we'll get to yeah. that later. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Hmm. Bananas. Yep. 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 Hmm. Yeah, that is going to be a solid single malt in a few years. Almost like a custard kind of note to mm. it. Banana custard. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of that powdery. Mm. Okay, going back. Oh, wow. Um, the difference. Double fisting Japanese new make. It's, it's, it's a brave new world. It's so nice. It's amazingly different. Like, it's the same fermentation, it's the same ingredients, the same yeah. distillery, just two different stills. And it's, yeah. Like, a lot of people don't really emphasize how much the shape and the size and the production methods of the distillation actually make a massive difference to the product, right? Yeah, it's, this is a really, it's a really interesting way to show, like, just the elements of distillation. Mm -hmm. Like, to just have both of these in my hand right now is, it, it, it's mad. Like, the fact that they're so different. Yeah. Yet so very similar. Yeah, that's no, super oh. cool. So is this, I don't think it says anywhere on the label how many of these were actually produced. Say in the box, maybe? I know it's a disturbingly small amount because we're getting all of it. And yeah. Like, we can't afford to get a large amount. Um, it's, it's something like 36 bottles or something like that. There is nothing that states it on yeah. the box. I'll look into it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. But very, very rare like one of a kind, uh, something that I just, I absolutely know is going to be in auctions in a few years time. Mm -hmm. When, when, you know, when Shizuoka is a, a very well-known brand name, which I, I know that it will be, it already is in Japan. Um, it's, uh, this is going to fetch a fortune. Graham cracker. Graham cracker. Which one? The second one. Cool. Yeah. Banana just custard on the graham cracker. Yeah. Is that its official Dram Association name? Um, it might be. Banana Custard on a Graham Cracker. We should start doing that. Yeah, Bringing sure. back the Dram Association names. Banana Custard on a Graham Cracker. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down. What's the first one? Oh, jeez. Hmm. Hmm. It smells a little like tonic water, actually. A little? Yeah. I mean... Honey you tonic? Honey, honeydew. Do the honeydew. We'll we'll think about it. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, really, really neat experience to be able to try these two side by side. 
um, and even neater with the third one, which you might notice has a bit of color. So these two technically do appear in lots of different kits. These kits, by the way, um, are mostly available as um, um, as basically souvenirs at whiskey festivals, where um, where you know Taiko Nakamura actually goes and presents these. Mm -hmm. um, they're really rare. Like the Paris Whiskey Festival had one. There's one in America that did one. Um, but the third bottle is different in every one. So this is the one where Ooh. you literally can only get this. We're not going to open it yet. Oh. No, I'm sorry. You've got to wait for this one. Okay. Uh, this is one where uh, it's literally only available here. You cannot get this spirit anywhere else in the world. Oh. Um, but the kicker is, it's heavily peated. So we're going to wait till the end. Oh. Because we don't yeah. we don't want to ruin our palates, right? We're, we're about to have some unpeated whiskey, yep. and having yep. this, having had this before, it's a it, it's a little it's a bit of a dynamite, which is actually. Oh, it's kind of dynamite shaped. Oh, yeah, there you yeah. go. Um, yeah, it's it's a powerful, powerful, almost whiskey. It's twenty five months. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's red wine cask and it's peated. So this is the star of the trilogy, and we will get to that later on. So we actually perfect segue. We were just talking about uh, about how the shape and size of a still makes a huge difference mm -hmm. in, uh, in in the way whiskey turns out. This is a distillery, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, really takes that to heart. This cool. is this is what this distillery is all about, and uh, let's let's explore it. Let's shall we? Uh, what do we do with these? Let's put them over here. Yeah, uh, at all least right. the, I want to keep that one in decent view, so I don't forget about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we get to the end and they're like, "Oh, right, yeah, the, the, the she's welcome." Oh, right, yeah. Then there's, 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 so what's uh, this one, Brett? Uh, this would be a 22-year-old blended malt Scotch whiskey. Black had a raw cask. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, uh, that's all. It, oh, it says casked as Westport. Westport. Ah. Huh. Mm -hmm. So, ah, yes. Very excited about this one. Um, I'm, I'm sure a few. Yes, that's right. Dirty snow globe time. I don't know if the, can, the camera picking that up. It certainly is. Oh, look at that. That is the raw cask, ladies and gentlemen. This is raw. Unadulterated, unfiltered whiskey. Not just unchill filtered. Un unfiltered. This is just manually drawn straight from the cask. <laughs> it's oh, we were we were talking the other day about it being like uh, Goldschlanger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's Charschlanger. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I don't have a problem with that one. So actually, can you pass me that box first? Yes, of course. Because uh, this is a different box. For those of you who bought the Lache, this is a different box. Yeah. This is black. And I was talking um, about some of these upcoming releases and mentioning how a lot of these releases that we're about to present to you, mm -hmm. if they were Scotch Malt Whiskey Societies, they'd be black label. But they don't really do that in Blackadder. Right, Adder. yeah. They do black box. Oh, interesting. So this is a black box Blackadder. <laughs> uh, which yeah. is, yeah, yeah, black box Blackadder. And uh, this is a, a whiskey I'm really excited to try because, to the best of my knowledge, I don't think I've had a cask strength whiskey from this distillery. Cast strength at 53.2%. 53.2. Very cool. Yeah. Um, right. So one of the things, I'm going to talk, tell you uh, one of the things we were working on with Blackadder. Uh, a little bit of uh, how the sausage is made kind mm -hmm. of thing, but less gross. Um, I wanted to work with Blackadder. I mean, most mostly, well, mostly because I love Blackadder's whiskey. Yeah. But uh, for a couple of other reasons. First of all, it meant that I got to work with a legendary Jay Wheelock, who unfortunately passed away earlier this year. Yep. Uh, this is a tasting that I was personally working with him on. Um, so this is this is part of Jay's legacy to us here. Um, so this, that's exciting as well. It's, it's nice to feel that connection to an old friend. Um, but uh, we are obviously a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society place. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to bring in another independent bottler who I felt would complement Scotch Malt Whiskey, um, who provided a very different experience, who provided whiskies from different distilleries and different styles of whiskey, a little bit more avant-garde, maybe a little less traditional, mm -hmm. um, that would mean that they weren't competing against each other. That was, that was my plan. That was one of the things I really wanted to do. I think you succeeded. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, never seen, never seen a Westport. Yeah, in the SWS. No, Westport is not a distillery. Um, that is a, it's a code name. No, oh. a code name for something that the SWS, to the best of my knowledge, has never done, but Blackadder certainly has. Interesting. A teaspoon malt. Oh, it's a teaspoon. It's a teaspoon. Nice. Very which good. is uh, a contractual loophole. 
um, something that the Scots are very good at. Yes, it's it's all about taxes. <laughs> you see. Uh, well, this one's not spoken much about yeah. taxes as intellectual property. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that what what happens with a teaspoon malt? Uh, uh, it happens in a couple of different ways. Sometimes it is literally that a company buys an entire cask of whiskey. Um, and are told they're contractually obliged not to release it as a single malt. They're mm-hmm. told you have you can buy this, but you have to release it as part of a blend. So it's not in competition with our regular products. Mm. Other times, whiskies are actually designed straight from the ground up mm-hmm. as a teaspoon malt. Um, and this one is one of those. It's, it says casked. See, casked as Westport. Yeah. Not blended as Westport. Yeah. Casked as Westport. This is a single cask. But the new make spirit that went into that cask had a teaspoon of something from a different distillery. Interesting. So that it's technically not the the main component. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and that is something that is done because the main component of this whiskey is the best selling single malt in Scotland. Glen- All right. Glenmorangie. Oh. Wait. What? Yeah. This Whoa. is this is Glenmorangie with a teaspoon of Glenmore. Because at the time when this was distilled, back in, what's the year? 97? 1997, yeah. At yeah. the time, uh, they were in the same ownership. Oh, um, there you go. In fact, shortly after this was made, they actually bought the SNWS for a short while, <laughs> uh, which is kind of funny. Um, despite the SNWS being owned by Glenmorangie um, Company, yeah. I've never seen an SNWS Glenmorangie. I don't even know what I, code I don't know what the code is. Yeah. I don't even have one. I'm not really? sure, really. Never seen it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to trying this. Do you want to do the honors, Brad? I would love to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Oh, you know what I should have done? Oh, there's Hang char on. on the, look at that. Oh, there's wow. char on the cork. That's cool. Okay, I'm gonna put the cork back on just for a second. Oh, you're gonna because we gotta gotta just mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just get a little bit of that cask. Yeah, we want some char in our whiskey. There we go. It's it's not a black of the tasting unless you're picking it out of your teeth, ladies and gentlemen. Very important. <laughs> mm. Ooh, that glug. Good glug. Good glug. glug. All right, take a word out of the uh, the lexicon of Sir Lawrence Graham. I've just knighted him, apparently. <laughs> Sir Lawrence Graham. Uh, letters uh, synchronized nosing. Mmm. Mm. Butterscotch, lemons, um, cut grass. Yep. Um, actually, uh, what is that? That's That's a very particular smell. Oh, my memory's like flashing back. Yeah, my hard drive is spinning rapidly right <laughs> now. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. What's that? It's uh, it's from my church flower arranging days. Oh, the smell when you cut the ends off of a rose stem. When, oh, you know when you, okay. you trim it on an angle yeah, so yeah. it takes the water better. Yeah. Interesting. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. So Glenmorangie. Despite being the the distillery that really made popular the whole idea of finishing, um, mm-hmm. I've always, I mean, the, the finished stuff's great. Like, you yeah. know, they've got the La Santa and the Quinto Rubin yep. and all that. I really like the 10, and the 10 is the best selling malt in Scotland, or at mm-hmm. least it was when I was there. I think it still is. Um, Glen Morangie for me is just, it's just best when it's just bourbon. Like, the 10 and the 18, yeah. I think, are just stunning whiskies. And that's what we've got here. We've got a what, 22 year old. Straight up, fresh bourbon cask. Mmm. Just glorious. That is... Yeah. Molasses, vanilla, Molasses, butterscotch. Molasses, vanilla, butterscotch. Yeah, yeah. Mmm. So I was mentioning how uh, the shape of the still is an important part of Glenmorangie. Um, so Glenmorangie claims to have the tallest stills in Scotland. Mm-hmm. A claim which is actually also claimed by uh, um, my, my favourite um, baby vomit. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's a new make I didn't like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, also, a claim made on Isla um, by. Uh, I'm, I'm dripping trivia to you here. Uh, Brooklady? Brooklady. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Please. I know, right? <laughs> um, and there's actually an important reason for why the tall stills happened. I mean, they probably knew the effect it would have on the whiskey, which is now legendary with mm-hmm. the extra sort of. Sort of grassy notes coming from the, the, the taller stills, the more copper contact, the reflux. Mm-hmm. But it's actually simply because they were saving money. So when Glenmorangie started in 1887, mm-hmm. their first sets of stills, which have now been replicated and you know rebuilt and you know to the exact blueprints, 
are actually secondhand stills from a gin distillery. Really? A gin, old gin pot stills, yeah. Oh, wow. Which is kind of neat. That's very interesting. So, traditionally, Glenmorangie is made by a group called the 16 Men of Tain. Um, Tain being the, the, the town, the town, village, one of the two, uh, that Glenmorangie is situated. Um, they no longer have the 16 Men of Tain. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, because they've expanded in the last few years quite, oh. quite substantially, and now 16 people are, are not enough. They actually have a staff of 24 now at the distillery, the, the... which... For the amount of whiskey they produce is still mad. Um, like these, this is a multinational company. They're owned by like Louis Vuitton. There's t- like twenty. There's twenty four of them. Twenty four of them. Wow. Um, they don't call themselves a twenty four men of Tain. They just go by men of Tain now. Yeah. Which is funny because I think I'm pretty sure there's at least one woman. But I mean, men's a collective yeah. term, I guess. Yeah. It probably shouldn't be. It seems archaic. But, People you know, of Tain. Pe- the the folks of Tain. Yeah. There you go. Tain oh, fellowship. Right. The fellowship of Tain. Yeah. Yeah. The fellowship of Tain. That's good. There we go. I like it. That's, that one's yours, Glenmorangie. You can take it. Pack it up and I'm going to sell it. Oh, yeah. Um, please give me a bottle of your 1950... Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing about Glenmorangie, right? Like, you don't see Castor and Single Malt stuff from them. Like, their, their own releases... We never see them in BC, but even if you could get them here... Yeah. ...are really expensive. Yeah. Like, there was one I was going to bring on a special order. I think it was a uh, 87 or something. So, you know, a little few years older than this one. Yeah. It was going to be about sort of 12 to 15 grand. Oof. <sighs> yeah, it came in this crazy box. It was a, like in a circular bottle with a box that clamps together like this. Was... Oh, yeah, you know, I think I've actually seen that mm. of uh, unpackaging videos. Yeah, and it, and it kind yeah. of rises as the box opens. Yep. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I ain't nobody got time for that shit. That's, yeah, I mean, that's crazy. That's, yeah. that's too expensive for a whiskey. No one's ever going to drink it. This is uh, substantially less expensive, which is nice. Um, so yeah, don't don't think five figures. Don't even think four. This is normally $232.09. Jeez, wow. And it can be yours right now at a very special introductory price of $204.26. When you say right now. I say, I literally mean right now. Oh, Go to right. straffelicker.com. Oh. Straffelicker.com. It is now available. Link in, direct link in the live chat. Um, the brand new redesigned version oh, of the website. It looks so good. Thanks, man. It looks Put a lot so of evidence into that. Yeah. Uh, we are shipping everywhere in BC and, uh, yeah, shipping shipping across with uh, Canada Post mm-hmm. and uh, local pickup. And we're still doing the uh, local delivery six days a week now as yes. well. Um, yes, yes, yes. At least at time of recording. I'm pretty sure it's ongoing for a little while. I, I sure hope. Think, I don't think we're ending that anytime yeah. too soon. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to pick up a bottle of this, please go for it. And I'm going to dive in and see what I get on the palette. Yes, yeah. it's calling my name. I just love the fact that I can look into the base of the Glencairn and just see little flecks. <laughs> yeah, a little sort of puddle of black in the just, bottom there. Oh, mm. Let's get a quick little stir. Mm. My wild. That is like the that is like the Glenmorangie 18 that I know very well and I love, but in hyperdrive. Wow. It is big, it is bold, it is just... That is a big whiskey that is really just beautiful. It's well integrated. The yes. age on this is just perfect. Like, I've always... I often, you've probably heard me talk about the whole thing where there's the, the graph where uh, as whiskey ages, the spirit gets less prominent and the wood gets more the, prominent. Yeah, and yeah, ideally, yeah. you want it where it intersects. Mm-hmm. And that's why most distilleries release in that 12 to 18 kind of range. Mm-hmm. That's where the mm-hmm. intersection is. This is just a little bit past that intersection where it's it's probably a little bit more wood influence than spirit, but the spirit, it's, because it's so unique, it holds up. It's beautiful. And yeah, that, that wood just brings those grassy, fruity notes to life. Like I, I, I felt like I got hit in the face with a ton of apples my first mm, sip. Just yeah, like, no, I totally, mm, yeah. It's very mm, orchardy. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Cool thing about Glenmorangie is they do use absolutely zero peat in yeah. their barley. It's like zero spec. 100% like just unpeated barley. Also, before it was a distillery, it was a brewery. Oh. Which is interesting. Because that's particularly interesting. I just learned that. Um, I'm pretty sure I've read trivia elsewhere that some of the new distilleries are the first in Scotland to be converted from a brewery to a distillery. 
Uh, but maybe it means like a still active brewery. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, this was it started life as a brewery hmm. and then became a distillery. I mean, it is just very old beer. Mm -hmm. And they used Tarlogi spring water. Oh. Uh, which I, you know, a lot of people use spring water. I, you've heard me go on and on about how I don't think water is that important in the making of whiskey, but I do very much enjoy the word Tarlogi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds Star Warsian. Mm. Mm. That is so well put together. Mm. You're right. That is a that is a beautiful balance there, and there's definitely some wood mm. that kind of sticks around a yeah. little longer. But for anyone looking for a particularly mm. solid example of a classic whiskey style, like this is not new. This is not different. This is not anything avant garde. This is just traditional Scotch whiskey done incredibly well. Yeah, this is probably my new go-to. This is phenomenal, and like it. Punches well above its above its price, For, like just like, over two hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, but just over two hundred bucks to get a twenty-two year old, yeah, single cask Glenmorangie, basically teaspoon malt, same thing, same, same thing. And it's, it's insane. Oh. Like I would frankly like I'm gonna buy one of these, and I frankly would have paid almost double. Yeah, to be honest. Like, yeah, and I don't I don't often delve into the over three hundred dollar range myself very often. I mean, let's face it, working mm -hmm. in a liquor store. Mm -hmm. Um. I wish I could. There's a lot of whiskeys in that price range that I would just I would buy, I would buy several. Um, but yeah, this is one that I would I would have spent more. I would have spent more on. Certainly, That's so lovely. All right. Mm. I should probably try a little drop of water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little cinnamon actually as well. Mm. For science, right? Got to do it for science. I'm even going to go one step further for science and have a little sip of water before I try it again. Mm. Really clear that palate. We are professionals, after all. <laughs> I mean, we get paid to do this. Mm. Technically, we are professionals. That's a good point. That is a good point. Never claim to be an expert, but theoretically, we are professionals. Yes. Mmm, <laughs> creamy now. Got a lump. I get cantaloupe on the nose. Cantaloupe. A little sweeter. From honeydew to cantaloupe. Well, it's the... Yeah. Mm. I'm definitely getting a, a creamy, a sweet peppery cream. Mm. Almost like someone wasn't quite sure if they were making custard or bechamel. Yep. Mm. Oh, that is, wow. Maybe a little um, herb in there now, a little, I want to say sage. Yeah. Give it time. That is frankly glorious. I was expecting great things from this, and this has over-delivered. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that is a sign of things to come in this tasting, because to be brutally honest, I haven't been ex as excited about a tasting as I am for this one in a very long time. Um, if you think this is off to a good start, oh boy, there's there's magic to come. Let's. I guess we should just keep on trucking. Let's move on to the second new release. This is, uh, I guess, our fourth dram tonight but the second of the new releases the second royal cask hey adam i have another black box yeah you do this black box is very exciting because look at the year does it say the year on there uh yes yeah, it, it does. does uh the the second of november 1989 1989 29 years old cask cask strength cask strength at 53.2 percent abv yeah we have a Blair Athol. Damn right, we've got a Blair Athol. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, a 1980s Blair Athol. This is a thing of beauty. Um, oh, I can't wait to see what this is all about. Where were you in uh, 89, Brett? Uh, let's see, I would have been four. Uh, growing up in Vancouver, uh, probably running around throwing little uh, crab apples at my brother. Oh, fantastic. He, he would have been like one and a half. So. Uh, yeah. you, where were you in 1989? I would be one year old. Mm -hmm. I would have been in uh, Gainsborough. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 I left when I was like two. I don't, ever, I, I don't, I don't remember Gainsborough. Well, I'm sure it was a good decision you made at the time. Yeah. I mean, I was probably <laughs> just drinking milk and living life. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah Actually, uh, I don't know if you caught uh, in the intro video, there's that uh, hilarious, there's a guy sat drinking Blackadder in a, in a room full of Blackadder bottles mm -hmm. saying, I, 
I started drinking whiskey at an early age. No, sorry. I started drinking at an early age. But it was mostly milk back then. Um, yeah. Can, yeah it's can, a good, it's yeah. a good, good line. Um, good line. That was actually Robin Tuchek, the founder of Black Adder. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Kind Very of cool. good. I also enjoyed milk when I was young. Yes. Uh, yes. I enjoy milk now. I prefer whiskey, though. Yes, that's fair. All right, Brad. Would you prefer this whiskey? Yeah, crack, crack it open. You're 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 in the driving seat. I'm not actually driving though. That would no. be very irresponsible and also illegal. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Here we go. Mm. Oh, once again. Oh, we've got a nice little ring of black. Oh my god, we've got a ring of black this time. That is. Oh. Why? All right. <laughs> you gotta do the the invert and the. You gotta show off the raw cask. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's why we're here. <laughs> we all love that raw cask. Oh, black out of you, mad scientists, you. Hey, you know, good glug. Good glug. Good glug. One thing we didn't mention in the uh, the Westport is that these are very limited releases because they're single cask. This is, I think, believe it says on the bottle how many there were of the Westport. Check uh, well, that's the Black Apple. Oh, right. Uh, it does also say on that bottle mm -hmm. as well. But uh, the Westport is a bottle, ooh, 170. 170 of these in existence. So that's that's pretty neat. You, and they're all individually numbered. What's, what's the number on this one? This was number three. Number three. Which I'm assuming means that in the same case as it is bottle number one and two. Interesting. So if anyone particularly wants bottle number one of that Westport, um, let us know in the notes and as you purchased it, which some of you probably already have. So I'll just let the first person who purchased it get number one. So oh, <laughs> uh, if we have it. This 29-year-old, uh, what kind of cask type? Single cask? It doesn't actually say. Wow. Well, yeah. uh, either it was a small cask or a lot went to the angels because hmm. there were only 56 bottles of this produced. So I'm going to say that they probably used part of the cask for a blend. Oh, okay. Or yeah. they decided to release it um, at different ages. Oh. That's something some companies do. They'll release part of the cask and then wait a year and release the rest of the cask. Nice, okay. That makes sense. Because, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's yeah, tiny. This is 51 of 56. Yeah. And that's pretty neat. Yeah. All right. We've still All got right. that whiskey border. Stick to your side. Um, cool. Very cool. Let's see what the... Uh, Apple's all about. So Blair Apple is known for its nutty flavors. Mm -hmm. um, this is the one that you did the uh, the trivia for on the last video for the uh, uh, for the SNWS Blair Apple that we had. Oh yeah. And uh, we uh, I'll, I'll 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 not much try and make you say it this time, but it's it's from Pit Lockery, <laughs> and it's part of the Bell's Blend. Yes. Mm. Interesting um, other note I recently learned about Blair Apple, which is kind of cool. Uh, so it's it's a Diageo mm -hmm. malt. So Diageo, you know, the biggest uh, drinks company in the world. Um, Diageo got the vast majority of their uh, whiskey portfolio when they bought out an old company called Distillers Company in 1986. Mm. So that was, you know, Johnny Walker. They so they bought all of the Johnny Walker distilleries, like including like Tabasker and Caliber and all that in mm -hmm. that package deal. Um, and before before they were Diageo, they were basically just the Guinness Company, which is kind of neat. Yes. Um, and the Guinness Company actually bought this distillery a year before they got the Distillers Company. Interesting. So this was probably one of, if not the first, of the Diageo malts. Hmm. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, they bought this one in 1985. Well, that's... Only, wow. A few years before this was distilled. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so we're probably looking for nice, nutty, herbally, kind of spicy flavors in this one. Uh, there's definitely a lot of spice on the nose. It's very... It's very gentleman-like on the nose. It's yeah. very... It's very slow and welcoming and polite. I like, like, like baking spices. I'd want to say, like... I feel like this whiskey has its own butler. Oh. It's just like mm. opening doors and like you've, you've just entered a big stately manor. There's there's a giant oaken door that you've just entered. There's, uh, there's, there's a big old Persian rug that's slightly dusty. Um, you've just signed your name in an old um, sort of guest book. With, yep. There's leather leather bound guest book with a, with a fountain pen. Yep. This is, this is the butler's whiskey. Uh, this, is, this is what he would offer to very distinguished guests of the household. The Lord's private stash, I would think. Holy crap, it smells nice. <laughs> mm. It's a rare, beautiful thing to have an unfiltered, 
untarnished, just straight up out of the cask, 29-year-old Highland whiskey. Yeah. Like, what was the ABV on this? 50, 55? 53? 53.2. That's, that's beautiful because that's not that high. Yeah. Like, that's... A lot of a lot of whiskeys get watered down to 48 these days. This is only five above that. This is a very approachable ABV, so I'm expecting this to be a very, again, welcoming butler-like, uh, butler-like <laughs> uh, sensation on the palate. But on yes. the nose, it just it has literally zero burn. Yeah, it's it's just lovely. It's whiskey how whiskey was meant to be um, at like this kind of age, like. I'm not saying that all whiskey has to be old, but when whiskey is old, this is how it should be presented. All right, what are you smelling? All of the things I just mentioned about the door and the book and everything. But also, yeah, some some spice. There's a little bit of like a... Sirens going off there, that's exciting. Um, some, something's going down in downtown. Yeah. Um, I would say there's something a little bit um, Roman Catholic on the nose. Oh. Yeah, I, I feel like this stately home, this manor house that we've just been entered into has a small chapel off to the side and they've just finished mass. Because I'm, I'm getting a little bit of the incense. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Distant incense. Yeah, there's a sm very slight smoke, but not in a, not in a, like a barbecue or a char way, just in a sort of a, a slight herbal ashiness. Hmm. I want to say walnuts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just maybe just walnut oil. I watched a YouTube video a couple of days ago about um, a guy who swears by using walnut oil when cooking steak, and that sounds really good. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm still a fan of the uh, butter method. You just oh yeah, but it's it over. And, yeah. yeah, it's hard to beat butter. All right, I'm going in. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. No burn whatsoever. Mmm. When whiskey... Na oh, man. That was an interesting thing right at the end there. Sorry, I just cut myself off. Mm -hmm. uh, when whiskey naturally Ooh. gets to this kind of ABV, and you're getting... You're getting... Not, you're not getting the alcohol burn, but you're getting all of the flavor. Because this hasn't been, like... This hasn't been watered down to this. The alcohol has literally just worked its way out yeah. of, of the mix. Uh, and left all of those beautiful, big fatty esters, all those big flavor molecules. And it's just, there's so much happening. It's such a rich, bold whiskey, but it's, it's, it's a butler, but it's like a butler that's like seven foot two. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very, very polite uh, professional wrestler. I've known a lot of them to be very polite. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Andre, it's Andre. Ooh. Andre's around. Mm. Yeah, that'll work. Andre, that'll you know, by the end of his career, had quite a lot of money and enjoyed the finer things in life. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Andre would very much appreciate um, this kind of whiskey. I don't know. I don't know what it is, and maybe it's just like the mental image <clears throat> that I'm getting right now. But for some reason, I feel like I'm getting mint on the palate, and I don't think it's there. But it's reminding me of. Remember when mouthwash had the alcohol and then they removed it? That, like, I get the removed but still potent mouthwash effect from this whiskey in the best possible way. I think what you're getting is not the mint flavor, but the mint effect. It's cooling. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's it. It's, it, it's, so, it's so not hot that it's yeah. cold. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it legitimately, like, makes your mouth feel refreshed and cooler afterwards. It's lovely. I mean, it's a, an expensive thing to gargle. But. <laughs> I will not gargle on this. No? No. Oh, come on. I double dog dare you. <laughs> I don't think I can do that to this whiskey. I mean, that's fair. It's just. It would be a bit of a waste. Also, gargling anything that's, you know, over 50% ABV is probably going to result in some severe coughing, and that is not hygienic. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Although we do have. We do have some hand sanitizer. This hand sanitizer is brought to us by Okanagan Crush Pad. So oh, thank, yes. thanks for spotting this email, Okanagan Crush Pad. OCP, thank you. Mm. Yeah, this is it's really good. This is just a this is 
super approachable, mm -hmm. phenomenal dram. Much more um, refined, much more gentlemanly than, oh, than the Glenmorangie. Yeah. The Glenmorangie is a big, raw, classic, kilt-wearing, highland broadsword of a dram. This is this is the, the, the country manor dram. Yes. Still, it's, I mean, it's a highland dram. Uh, it's from the highlands, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit less rough. This is very wears a pocket watch kind of a mm -hmm, whiskey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Tweed jacket with leather elbow patches. The Professor's Whiskey. The Professor's. Yes. Professor Andre's Drow. Perfect. <laughs> Thank it. That's it. <laughs> mm. Oh, lovely. Oh, it's so nice to have this style of whiskey. It's so hard in BC to get this quality and style of whiskey these days. It's, we're basically, either you pay five digits or you are a, a fan of um, independent bottlings mm -hmm. and know where to look and mm -hmm. borrow an informed whiskey buyer. Yeah, I mean, like, because Blair Athol, when it comes out with, I mean, there have been a few special edition Blair Athols. I mean, they had four and four editions. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think I'm okay here. And they've had a few in the Diageo's annual releases. I mean, a 29 year old Blair Athol. It's gonna be pricey. Yeah. Again, like this is one of those things where Blackout. I cannot stress enough the value and quality in Blackout. Like this, again, by all rights, should be a good one and a half times this amount. That being said, it's expensive. It's a, it's a twenty-nine year old yeah. single cask. Yeah. Blair Athol. It's yeah. supposed to be expensive. That's that's the way whiskey is these days. Unfortunately, gone. Gone are the decades past where you could get this kind of whiskey um, for. Uh, you know, less than what this is going for. Yeah. Um, but the regular price on this, this is available right now. Normally four fifty six forty four. Not good price. Even better yeah. price. Three ninety nine ninety one. Ooh, just under four hundred. Just, just under four. That's not deliberate at all. <laughs> um, four hundred bucks for a nineteen eighty nine single cask Blair Athol. Yeah. A stunning quality. Just a, yeah. A godly whiskey, to be it's, honest. It's phenomenal. Right? Yeah, I mean, we've had some great, great Blair Athols in the SWS recently. We haven't had anything with this kind of age, so it's. Uh, I very much recommend picking up an SWS Blair Athol that's in that sort of uh, 10 to 12 ish kind of range. Yep. That's basically what we've had recently, and doing a comparison with this. The side by side both, be very both have definitely their merits. Yeah. Uh, oh, God, this is good, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm. I, I told myself at the, at the be before doing this that uh, I shouldn't try and pick a favorite because that it just seems immoral to pick a favorite child. But I'm already having a hard time with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, All right, so let's move on. Moving ever forward, it is time for the next broadcast release, and this is not a black box. This is not. This is a, the regular style. This is box, the classic, the, the high original. Lender. Highland covered in smoke. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very, very nice. Um, yeah. Uh, you know what, Adam? I'm going to let you introduce this one. Not because uh, I don't want to butcher the name, but... Fair enough. I think you should do it. <laughs> this is a 2008 11-year-old oh, Balmena. Uh, love me a good Balmena. This is even more incredible because it's a sherry cask finish. 58.5% ABV. Mm -hmm. Right there. She's a big boy. Alrighty, so Balmena, very much a load-bearing whiskey in a sense. It's a uh, big weighty flavor, long fermentation, worm tubs, big oily viscous whiskey that yep. is specifically designed for sherry casks. So this is, this is where it's supposed to be. Uh, um, which is cool. Again, uh, the hand numbered uh, bottle on here. Mm -hmm. uh, 268 produced. This is bottle number 11. Oh, well, I have number one on this one too. Mm -hmm. Bottle Jeez. 11 of 268. That's cool. Um, my lucky number is 11. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, mm. Enjoy. Um, so, yeah, Balmanic, uh, really cool distillery. We've had, again, several really fantastic interviews at Balmanic. Remember uh, 1950s Ice Cream Parlor? Oh, yes. Uh, oh, that, that whiskey. Was, that one's Big, beautiful. thick, unctuous, creamy whiskey. That was what happens with Balmanic in a bourbon cask. Mm -hmm. This is what happens when you have a Balmanic in a bourbon cask and then a sherry cask. Oh, it, this the is color on it looks beautiful. In fact, I'm going to show that off, but before I do, we're going to invert. Oh, gosh. Dirty snow globe time. That's so good. I and mean, you see how viscous it is by how slowly they fall. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. You can actually see like a second. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm excited. I, you know me, Adam. I love a sherry cask. Mm -hmm. So let's dive right in there. Um, so Balmatic is owned by Inver House, and uh, they've never really released it as a single malt. They say they never will because it's simply too highly regarded and in too much high demand from blending houses. Uh, this is bought not just by Inver House for their blends, but from blending houses all over the map um, to be a big, oily, viscous, sherry bomb base for their blends. Um, it's very much a traditionally method whiskey, as you can tell with the worm tubs. Mm -hmm. uh, think um, think along the lines of Ben Roma from Springback. It's okay. that kind of sort of traditional quality kind of wow. thing. They also make, um, they do have an, uh, an official bottling, however, that we have in the store, or oh, as yes. they normally do, Caron Gin. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they make Caron. Yes, yeah, it is down downstairs. Mm. Excellent. Slanger, yes. let's. Uh, mm. Nowhere near as aggressive as I was expecting. Wow, that is, that is that is weirdly tame. There's no burn to this one either. No, it's like the burn gets contained in the little char flakes. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be cool. Yeah, I don't think that's actually how it works. I'm not a scientist. Again with the ice cream though. Yeah, rum and raisin though. Um, like a raspberry swirl almost. Ooh, yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a double scoop. Yeah. Raspberry raisin, raspberry raisin, rum and raisin, rum raspberry, raisin swirl. raspberry yeah. swirl. Yeah. Although I think it's also got like the raspberry syrup on top. Yeah. yeah. Like it's got. It's, yeah, it's fruity, creamy, fruity, creamy, mm -hmm. delightful. All right, let's. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That is a nice chewy sherry cask younger whiskey. But again, where's that ABV? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like it's hiding. It's amazing. Literally no burn, but it's 58. Mm. Like I could, I feel like I could pour this into my eye and still see. I'm not going to. Please don't. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, it's mm. oh. oh, so much mad. going on, big, rich flavor, but mm, tame. A little bit of licorice, mm -hmm. red licorice, which I don't really think is licorice, um, but both red and black. It's like those pinwheel ones where it's got both sort of wrapped around you each see, other. See, you gotta pick a side. Oh, I always see you pick a side. I, I truly believe in sitting on the fence whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Get a better view. Fair. Oh. Mm. Honestly, this is one of those whiskeys where Whatever we say isn't going to do as much justice as just trying it. Yeah. You should just get a bottle of this, and you can because it's on sale right now. And it's it's normally 187.74, and it's right now 165.13. Yep. 165.13 for the sherry cask finish Balmena. What? At 58.5 with the floaties. What? That is a deal. If you're looking for... I mean, at that price range, that makes it basically an alternative for, like, Apple Hour or Bernard. Pretty much, yeah. It's, like, 20 bucks more or something. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you? 20 bucks more at cask strength. With an age statement. With the floaties. Yeah, raw it's, cat. Like, that's... Yeah. This is mad. It's really... I'm, I'm impressed. Talk about... This is one of those ones where I got that was, I thought, going to be a bit of a risk. It could have turned out a bit weird. Mm -hmm. um, that's the thing with Blackadder. This is not a knock on them at all, but nope. because they do get a little bit more experimental than the SNWS, I wouldn't say the consistency is quite there. SNWS is consistently always top notch. Blackadder, sometimes you get absolutely over the top incredible, and sometimes you get something that's like, eh, a little. little they, they take strategic risks. They do. And, and when it often pays off, and when it doesn't, majority, yeah. they, they know it doesn't and they price it accordingly. Yeah. Um, this is. And this is phenomenal. Did they think this was a bad risk? Because this is this a is, great price. And no, no, this is just whiskey. this is just the kind of price that back is. Oh, that's because it's oh. look at the box. Yeah, it's uh, it's, the, it's it's cheap it's and the, yeah. Although I admit, like I do like these boxes a lot more than the other ones. There's no bad Photoshop. Remember the oh oh what was that? What was the the um, the Pete Reek? Yeah, Ooh. yeah, the Pete Reek's a bit bit, bit rubbish. Um, I'm coming around with the whole Black Adder branding. I, I thought it was kind of a little tragic, but I'm, I'm, I kind of like it. It's, I, I, it's I like kind of the, funny. They, they let the whiskey do the talk. They do, and yeah. that's great. That's that's great. Like this label is just it. it 
it, it's, it, it somewhat leaves a lot to be desired as a designer, but as a person who just wants to know what the hell's in the bottle and drink it, yeah, yep. it's got everything you need. Like, all the information says Speyside Malt Whiskey is one of 268 bottles. Um, drawn a cast strength from a hogshead cask, bottled by Blackadder in October 2019. Yeah. A little water uh, added will help release its full flavor. Ooh, that's that's, that's a great, advice. What a great idea, bottle. Release that full flavor. Let the fatty esters run wild. Esters gone wild. Mm. Is that the name we've picked for this one? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't dislike it. No, neither. Yeah. That... Oh, that's more sherry. That is straight up more sherry flavor now. Um, maraschino cherries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's just released some of the sherry molecules in there. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Oh mm. wow! Add water to this one. That's that is a. Um, this is now a sherry bomb. Yeah, as yeah, maybe maybe hand grenade. Maybe, yeah, right. Mm. Maybe dynamite. Sherry dynamite. Stick. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, no, that is an official Dram Association recommendation. Yeah. Add a couple of drops of water to this. It mm -hmm. really does wake up the Leviathan. It actually tastes slightly more alcoholic, even though it's technically less. Yeah. Not in a bad way. Ah, oh, glory be to Blackadder. Let's move on oh. to the fourth of our new releases. <laughs> hey, look! It's, <laughs> it's a it's, black box. It's a black yeah. box. <laughs> and um, if you think the, the black box is cool, I, um, I don't think Brett has seen the bottle out of the box yet. Prepare to be amazed by some color. Okay. Because this is not a sherry cask finish. This is a full sherry cask maturation. That was distilled in 1992. Oh. Whoa. Mm. Whoa. Isn't that just a red hued golden beauty? This is a 26 year old Blair Findy. Blair Findy. Ever heard oh. of Blair Findy? No. That's because it doesn't exist. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Uh, does it say single malt or is it blended malt? Uh, it says single malt uh -huh. scotch whiskey. So this is alternatively to the Westport, where they sometimes add a teaspoon. Uh, this is just simply, the distillery that made this doesn't want other people using their name. It's an intellectual property thing. They, you know, they want to they keep their name for their own purposes, and I, I completely understand that. Uh, so legally, they're not allowed to put the name on there. They're not, we're not, I don't think we're supposed to say where it's from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we can speculate, we can explain things, we can draw you to the correct answer without outright saying it's from there. Yep. Uh, so, Blair Findy. Blair Findy, right, is mm -hmm. the name of a family farm. The oh. traditional land owned by um, one of the many Grant families in Scotland. Oh. I mean, that doesn't narrow it down. There's yeah. actually a lot of distilleries that were started by Grants. Yeah. Uh, let's narrow it down a little more, though. That mm -hmm. Grant family actually purchased a new farm um, mm -hmm. on top of their traditional land mm. and uh, built a distillery on there called Glen Farkless. Oh, interesting. Uh, so that's just, I mean, I'm not talking about this whiskey. No. I'm just talking about the name Blair Findy. Yeah. Like, yeah. that was, it's, you know, yeah. it could be complete happenstance that this is called Black Indy. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm sure. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? It's, it's a funny thing, though. I mean, uh, it's... If it was Glen Farkless, that would make a lot of sense because they, they specialize in sherry casks. Oh, of course. Everything yeah. that they release under their own name is, is sherry casks. Is sherry, yeah. Absolutely. Oroso specifically, I believe. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Um, yeah, and again, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society... Scotch Malt Whiskey Society has released several... Um, Glen Farkless in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, if this is a Glen Farkless, who knows? Who knows? Um, we'll never say. Yes, we will never officially say that it is Glen Farkless. Um, <laughs> uh, neither will we officially say that SNWS Code One is Glen Farkless. But yeah. SNWS Code One, we've had a few recently in the Bourbon Bourbon Cask, yeah. which is they, Glen Farkless actually basically refuses to admit they make bourbon cask whiskey, mm -hmm. but they, they sell it off to blenders and independent bottlers. So this is going to be interesting, having an independently bottled full sherry maturation. Possibly Ken Farkless. Not saying that it is. Fen Glockless. Fen, Fen, Fen Glockless. Very good. Very good. <laughs> and let's we'll see if it pops like a Glen Farkless. Not that it is. Nice. Ooh. Again, the little sediment good on the cork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Ah. <sighs> Delightful. So, one thing to note as well, normally when you get a single cask full sherry maturation whiskey from 
what we assume this distillery is from, what it might be from. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. It's from a series called The Family Casks. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And Those family are ca- we pricey had, numbers. Oh, yeah. We had an amazing family cask tasting a couple of years back. Didn't we have a 92 family cask? Mm, I don't think so. Um, but we're not going to be doing that again anytime soon because I've been I've been given, like, I don't, I don't want to talk ill of the import company or mm-hmm. Glen Farkless. They're, they're charging the numbers which they can rightfully charge because people are buying it. But I'm not going to be buying any for the store because it simply won't sell here for the price of the rest. Okay. Um, I did the math and did like, all the import fees and everything to find out what a 1992 family cast from the most recent releases would be on our shelves. Mm-hmm. Over $900. Oh. So, no. Um, we're not quite there to be able to sell a fair a 1992 fair. family yeah, cast for absolutely. $900. So, that's substantially more than the family casks we had a couple of years back. Right. They've ramped up quite dramatically. Wow. Partially because they're no longer selling six packs, they're selling them in singles, um, which really increases Oof, the costs. That's that's painful. Yeah. But so luckily, we've got this one. And we've got currently the uh, BC exclusive on this one. Oh wow. That's um that's that's not a sherry bomb, that's sherry napalm. Yeah. Wow, eh? That is um my, are you sure the floaty bits in this aren't just like chopped up raisins? I, I didn't do the math, but I will, I will check it out. Man, oh wow, what's the what's the number on this? Two forty. Yeah. Wow. And you know the mad thing about that is that it specifically says on the label, um, two hundred forty bottles drawn at Castor into my sherry butt. So that's a hell of an angel share. Yeah. Because butts usually have about six hundred bottles in yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. My. God, that is a nose. That is... You know what the nose reminds me of? In the best way possible? The nose reminds me of the old Perth 23-year-old. Oh, yeah. But bigger. Bigger and less um, diverse, a little bit more focused. Yeah, and this is definitely that. They hone in on this sherry note and do it well. Yeah. Like, Glen Farkless, don't get me wrong, has a fantastic uh, base spirit. Is it Glen Farkless? What about, um, what about Blair Finney? I don't know. I don't know. It's, 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 I, I don't have the historic no, uh, experience with Blair Finney. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, uh, so they, they usually have um, a, a very, like, not, I, I don't want to say weak. It's not what I'm trying to get across, mm-hmm. but... Um, so a, a base spirit that lends itself to latching on to the cask yep. characteristics. Um, it's not that it's uh, not it doesn't it's not that it doesn't speak for itself. It's that it actually speaks for itself better when it is part of that marriage of spirit and cask. And this is exactly what's going on. And the danger especially with uh, a whiskey that's been in a sherry cask for this long, is, of course, uh, the, the terrible other S word, sulfur. Mm-hmm. Not getting any on the nose, you? I'm getting, like, a... No, but there is a slight hint, just a slight little hint of, yeah. like, a possible... Because I personally don't mind a little touch of sulfur. No, like, a bit little struck not. match. I mean, you don't want, like, rotten eggs. Good lord, no. no. A little bit of struck match is never hurt anybody. I think that's just a, an interesting part of the flavor profile but for those of you who are particularly particularly uh sensitive i don't think you're gonna find i i would call this like a funky sherry funky sherry not that like there is no like there is no hint of a sulfur here but it's it's like the funky chicken but exactly it's it's just got just that little like nudge possibly Mm. oh I think I just reached Nirvana. Oh my. Wow. We have to, have to, have to release this in a way that Drama Association members can come up and taste it. Um, yeah. So that they can take part in this because I I think it might take that the Chakes number one spot. That this is astounding. That is frankly ridiculous. That is cool. 
That is an old sherry like you just don't see anymore. So I'm going to be a just a terrible partner for you on this, but I'm I might be speechless for this. That's fair. I, I understand. You know, I already mentioned Sir Lawrence Graham once in this video. I'm going to mention him again. This is the kind of whiskey that Lawrence um, proudly like shows off and shares with me stuff from his you know back catalog from mm -hmm. years ago. This is the kind of stuff that he's always lamenting that doesn't happen anymore. That's that's what that is basically mm -hmm. the accidental theme of this Blackadder release that we got. Um, you know, classic, old school, old school whiskey. Mm. Mm. So I mentioned mm. that the family cask is over nine hundred dollars. This, you want the good news? Sure. About half. No. Oh. Regularly five twenty one sixty five. Right now four fifty nine oh four. It know? is worth every penny, and we don't even make pennies anymore. I know, right? I would. But I if would... you had a pillowcase full of them, you'd be halfway there. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I mean, as I said before, I very rarely delve into the over three hundred dollar whiskies myself, just simply budgetary wise. And mm -hmm. um, I very much encourage those of you who are able to uh, to, to splurge and uh, enjoy whiskies of that quality on a more regular basis, because generally, the, I think, um, yeah, I think most. Most uh, most places in uh, in Victoria that uh, um, are professional places uh, pay fairly well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So if you're in the IT industry or if you're uh, maybe even retired to Victoria, then three hundred dollars isn't that much to a lot of people. Um, and like, don't let the fact that I don't you know don't don't follow my lead yeah. in being shy about three hundred dollar plus whiskeys is basically what I'm saying. Uh, it's purely an economic uh, decision. Believe me, if I could buy one a week, I would. Um, <laughs> this is definitely on my wish list. I, I I don't know if Christmas bonuses are a thing in 2020, because let's face it, um, business hasn't been as usual. It's not booming, that's for sure. But if there's one of these left and I do get a Christmas bonus, I know exactly where it's going. <sighs> mm. Yeah, I just, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is cool. This is super good. This like, is phenomenal. Yeah. Like, I'm so happy that Jay managed to bring this in for us. Yeah. Like, Jay. Rest in peace, Jay. And Thank you so yeah. much. Actually, hey, yeah, that's saying rest in peace. I don't I don't know that Jay would want peace. I think Jay would want a bit of a, 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 a low-key party. Yeah. yeah. Right? He'd, he'd be drinking along with us. Yeah. He's, uh, I mean, I don't think he's the Zen Nirvana type. All the time. I mean, he was very, um, very, 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 you know, quiet and mm -hmm. tame, and, uh, and and you know, very at one with himself a lot of the time. But at the same time, he, uh, yeah, he, he, he wanted to, he wanted to have a little bit of a, a yeah. bit of a party. Yeah, absolutely. And this is one of those whiskeys. This is a refined party whiskey. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. This is definitely one of those ones that Jay would have uh, whipped out at a festival after party. We might have to do that in his honor, actually, in the next festival. <laughs> next, next festival, whenever that when, is. Whenever that happens. All right. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, okay. Yep. That is Remember glorious. how you said you weren't picking favorites? Uh, yep. <laughs> it's getting How's that going? pretty hard. <laughs> I think as I've gone, every time I taste a whiskey, it instantly becomes my favorite, and then I rethink it and think something else is my favorite, and then I don't, I don't know where I'm at anymore. But that is phenomenal. Oh. I think purely from the fact that I would buy it at 460 bucks. Oh, absolutely. Means that it's probably my favorite. I don't think any of the others I would buy if it was 460 bucks. I'd buy them at the price they are. But yeah, that's really good. That's that's really good. That's so nice. That's... <sighs> oh. It's one of those tastings where I feel like I'm a shameless shill just saying everything's good and you should buy everything. But hey, I, I had a part in choosing these whiskeys, so I have a right in saying they're good because they're good. Brett, are they good? You're an independent. Uh, I mean, you have no stake in this game, really. I I do, but at the same time, I don't. They're all phenomenal whiskeys and spirits that we've had so far, but man, have I picked a favorite already? The, the Black Fendi. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's 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 fair. That's fair. That's that's pretty fair. Uh, you're gonna. Have to, I'm I'm gonna insist that you check my bag before I leave. Yeah. <laughs> Because I don't trust myself here. That's fair. Oh, 
All right. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay, so I have an apology to make right here live on camera. My math skills are lacking. And I only brought 12 glasses when we need 16. So if you wouldn't mind fetching four oh, more glasses, yeah, no, right, I'm going to introduce the next whiskey. Please. So the next whiskey is actually, we're going to go back and have the Shizuoka that we talked about earlier. Ah. The 25 month old um, Japanese uh, spirit um, that is technically not whiskey yet, um, at least here. Uh, of course, whiskey laws and rules change uh, all around the world. And that's actually going to be the theme of our first Whiskey 101 with our special guest, Norm the IT guy, <gasps> coming up. Uh, where we decided we're going to do a whiskey tasting called What Isn't Whiskey? A lot, of a lot of people talk about what is whiskey, but we're going to talk about what isn't whiskey um, and have some fun with that. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is cool. Um, I have almost finished my personal bottle of, of this one at home, so I'm going to be picking up uh, a third set of these because I, I bought one to drink, I bought one to save, and I am in danger of opening my safe one, so I guess I just need to buy another. Yeah, that's... Um, I have to admit, I'm definitely drinking this at a much quicker rate than the uh, the two other spirits that haven't been aged at all. But this is cool. Brett, okay. prepare to be uh, prepare to be blown away by a crazy 25 month old whiskey. Oh, perfect, perfect whiskey spirit. I'm gonna do the pop on this. Oh, it is. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Oh, that was a very unsatisfying pop. Yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna leave it to you. I mean, <laughs> you've got the next one. I knew. I. It's oh. always difficult. It's like crocodile truffle. Oh, there we go. It's like crocodile with these. Which, if you're not Canadian and you're watching this and you're wondering what the hell crocodile is, do yourself a favor, research it. It's oh. an amazing tabletop it's game. So, I don't play enough crocodile. Making, yeah, Mennonite game. You can tell Brett's excited by this because uh, check out the, the the difference in pores. Oh yeah, like, that's, that's totally uh, yeah yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oh, satisfying going back in though. That's yeah. quite the quite the bang. Alrighty. Shizuoka, 25 month old, heavily peated, red wine cask, Japanese whiskey spirit. Like any, like this, basically in any other format, if this was a full size bottle going into like the premium spirit release or something, you'd be probably looking at three, four hundred dollars just for this one. Yeah. Uh, this glass came probably about six inches from my nose and I got the pee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is. It's like. Bacon oh. with like jam spread over it. Is, it is a candied bacon. Candied bacon with jam. It's a bacon jam sandwich. I don't think that exists, but maybe it should. On rye. Oh, maybe yeah. Not, nah, maybe not mm. rye. On, on some kind of dark bread. Maybe just a whole wheat. A whole wheat. Hmm. What do you think? It's. That's wild. 25 months? 25 months. Yeah. But that... And again, somehow, unless it's a labeling screw up, 63%. I don't know how that works. I've, I've given up trying to figure it out. Yeah. I'll go with it. But it's nice. Oh, wow. Oh, salt and vinegar. It's mm -hmm. weirdly coastal. If I was to guess blind what distillery this was and what age this was... A, I'd have a pretty hard time. Yeah. But I would straight up guess that this is a um, long row. Okay. Yeah. It definitely has that, that coastal style to it. A mm. little funky, a little coastal. Um, really takes on the cast characteristic. There's been quite a few red wine cast long yeah. rows. I've managed to try a few now. Even though they've not really been available in BC, uh, I mentioned once to a couple of people that I I really liked the one I tried, and then they just flooded me with samples. So I've tried five or six now. So oh, thanks, perfect. thanks, guys. Yeah. Um, I get, uh, I don't know why, but it's just like my, my brain hits Orkney. It's kind of your... Orkney. Yeah. But PTA. Yeah, much PTA. It's like a... It's like if Highland Park released a whiskey that was just their own maltings. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. I get that. Or maybe even uh, the Chegg. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, big coastal PD, whiny bomb of a whiskey. Like, I think if you go back to episode one, I, I talk about how I'm just going to give up calling this a spirit because it's freaking whiskey. It tastes like whiskey. It looks like whiskey. It's made like whiskey. It's a whiskey and it's really, really, really good. This is amazing. I'm glad you made me wait. Right. 
Um, I also found out uh, in some of my post research, I talked in the first video about mm -hmm. not knowing which type of still mm -hmm. was used. This is the um, wood fired still. Oh, okay. So it's not the Kuru's Hour. Okay. Um, it's the wood fired, which. I mean, I can't wait to try the Kuro's Hour, yeah. but I think the wood fire has added a whole dimension to this peated whiskey. It's basically, get this, it's basically Yuichi. Direct fired peated Japanese whiskey. Yeah. It's essentially a red wine cask, single cask, cast strength Yuichi. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Mm. Oh, that is wild. Mm -hmm. Oh. Sweet. Child of mine. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to mm. the. F no, not we yet. Can't move on yet. No. It, now that we've not tried all guys. three, mm -hmm. how much does it cost? Oh, yeah, that's true. Some yeah. of you haven't seen the first video, and some of you haven't uh, haven't seen this on our website. Maybe this is still available. Uh, we actually have uh, more in the warehouse that we can pull as well. So don't be shy. Buy three. Buy four. Buy ten. This. Why Honestly, this is a the, this is just a really cool tasting to have. Yeah, no, you, totally. You you're with your with your bubble. Do this. Get a set. Yeah, get a get a pack of these and sit down with your five closest friends and have a tasting of these. Because oh. that's actually the perfect size of five people mm -hmm. to do a big tasting of these three whiskeys. You'll have a great evening. Um, pick up another one so you can do it again at Christmas time with your family that you haven't seen for a while. Mm -hmm. That is what this is all about. This is it's designed to be drunk all three together. And we've had some other whiskeys in between, which I actually wanted to do so mm -hmm. I could actually really thoroughly figure out how good this is as a whiskey compared to other whiskeys. Like we this... just we just had a, a freaking Blair Findy which blew our minds, and this yeah. still blew our minds. Yeah, this is great. Like normally when you have a sort of you know five hundred and twenty dollar whiskey and then have something. Like this afterwards, it's like, Meh. but this is this yeah, whole this zone. Is, this is, um, and that three pack, which equates to just under the um, uh, the size of a regular bottle, it's six hundred mils, so three two hundred mil things mm -hmm. in, in a in wee box, um, is normally one eighty two fifty two. Is currently one fifty six forty three. Nice, which is fourteen percent off. When was the last time you saw a Japanese cask strength, like craft unique whiskey for one hundred and fifty yeah. bucks? You haven't. Not in this decade. Um, so yeah, pick one up, pick two up, save one, throw one on an auction in 10 years time and, I don't know, buy some other Japanese whiskey with the profits. Uh, <laughs> probably. That's probably going to happen. Probably um, happen. That's what I've planned. Um, not that auctions are available here in BC, but you can now do it in Ontario. Mm -hmm. So you could uh, take this across province lines uh, to Ontario and legally have an auction, or to Australia, or to the UK. Well. But maybe in 10 years' time, the BC Liquor Board has finally caught up with some of the rest of the uh, civilised world. One can only hope. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, that's kind of... I think we're dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. All right. All right. Final whiskey. Are we ready? I'm ready to go. Uh, put this with its... Mm -hmm. What is it, brethren? Over here. So this is particularly cool. Um, I talked about how this is a throwback whiskey tasting... Uh, this is the exception that proves the rule, because this is a new distillery, a new style, and one that I mm. am so excited to try. Uh, uh, again, drawing a parallel with uh, the SNWS. Um, this is one that we have had something similar in the SNWS quite recently. Well, um, I hadn't even tried it when I ordered this one. You have. Oh, you have. I did not have. Well, here we go. SNWS version. Welcome to the land of single cask, heavily peated English whiskey company, Brett. Right. You're about to have an interesting experience. Uh, cask strength at 63.4%, the raw cask, English single malt. Peated to 61 parts per million. Oof, okay. 61, making it 6 parts per million more than Ardbeg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who missed the May Part 2 outturn, where we had something called the War Seahorse, or as it will forever be known, War Seahorse. War Seahorse. Um, which was mind-blowingly good English whiskey that tasted like Laphroaig. That is pretty much what we've got again here. Uh, but from Blackadder instead of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. I was so excited to have the uh, uh, to have this come up on the order form that uh, Jay and I could order because uh, I knew the SNWS is coming but I still hadn't tried it. No. Um, and I knew that I needed to buy one of each and have them both sat side by side on my shelf at home because I'm English and I'm proud of the fact that we can make a bloody good whiskey. I'll be the judge of that. All right, go for it. Yeah, I yeah, 
I, I might be blind. I mean, yeah. the Warsi horse sold out instantly and has it, had rave reviews. So. It did, yes, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so English Whiskey Company, founded in 2006. It was the first English whiskey, um, single malt whiskey distillery mm. in 100 years. Uh, there actually used to be quite a few. Um, oh. English whiskey was a big thing, like same as Irish. Hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's now over a dozen that have been built since then, like uh, the Yorkshire Whiskey Company, which I'm looking forward to visiting. Um, the man in charge of designing the new house style for this distillery and training the staff how to uh, how to make it was Ian Henderson. Ian Henderson is formerly of Lefroy. Oh, yeah. Okay. He yep. was the Lefroy distillery manager for a long time, highly regarded, very... Um, well-respected whiskey maker and he basically took all of his knowledge from Lefroy, brought it down to England and helped them create not just an unpeated whiskey which they also make but a heavily peated Isla style whiskey in England in freaking England because <laughs> <laughs> why not I mean what so interestingly they have the logo on the label of this one yeah they, I, I, yeah. I really like that which is kind of cool. Mm. Uh, Blackadder has been allowed to use the English Whiskey Company's label. Yeah, it's quite The cool. English Whiskey Company, uh, their distillery, so that's the name of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, their distillery is called St. George's. Yep. And the whiskey's called English Whiskey Company. So as I mentioned in the outset video, it's kind of like a branding sandwich. Yes. <sighs> yes. All right. Yeah. It's a good pop. I like how you popped it and rattled up the glasses at the same time. Yeah, nice. It's a good pop. Mm. Good plug. Whoa. All right. Nice. Just like the other one, I seem to remember. Smells can be deceiving. Not that peachy on the nose so far. Yeah. Oh, but then if you, if you stick your nose in too far, it gets tingly. A nice. Oh yeah. Pleasant distant smoke on the nose, but. If it's like the Warsi horse, it's going to be, uh, it's going to have treasures deep inside of its golden hues. All right, coming in. Mmm. It's like lemon Lefroy. <laughs> it's like lemon Lefroy. Wow. Yeah, lemon flavored Lefroy. Mm. Mm. Not as medicinal. Not but, quite, no. But yeah. Huh. The Freudian slip. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Uh, ooh. It does make your mouth hole. Is there a way to well. make is there a way to make Lefroig sound more um, English than it does French? Oh, no, it's in Lafarage. Lafarage. No, you just say it in a Yorkshire accent. Yeah. Lafroig. 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 Oh, I Get you sent down to Lafroig, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Not that this is from Yorkshire. No. Um, where is the English whiskey company? I forget Norfolk. now. Norfolk, that's right. I read Norfolk. it on the label. Mm, good for you. Yeah, I didn't just know that off the top of my head. Of England. Yeah. Uh, As are you. Bottle. Yes, I am. Yeah. Bottle of 92. Mm. Wow. Mm. Get like a little bit of like a nice licorice kind of a note on this one too, but... Yep. Coastal again. Peppery. Yeah. yeah. It's lovely. Hey, Brett. You know how we specifically had a timer, so we did try to aim for that 45 minutes to an hour? Mm -hmm. It's been an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. We're good at this. <laughs> Uh, just double it. Every time we think an episode is going to last a certain amount, we'll just double it. Yeah, from here on out, it's going to be 20 minute episodes. I mean, bam, bam, bam. Again, one, one thing, uh, you can thank Christian Morin for this, uh, name, name dropping one of our members. Yep. Um, if, you, if you are on a bit of a tighter schedule and you can't quite uh, have an hour and a half for some of these tastings we're putting on, feel free to join in halfway through in the live chat. And you can still, you know, say hi when you arrive and watch it at double speed. Yep. It's quite entertaining. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Because unfortunately, though, it doesn't give the Muppet voices. No, I think our voices are a little too deep for that. Yeah. Well, no, it doesn't. It literally doesn't like double the voices. It just makes them faster. Oh. It doesn't change the pitch. That's upsetting. So yeah, I mean, it'd be really cool to be like. PPM. That'd be great. That'd be good. Yeah, but alas, YouTube is too smart and mm -hmm. knows to 
when we do Not the when we do the behind the scenes video mm. uh, to showcase this majestic studio, uh, we should also just put a sample of an up pitched uh, version of this conversation. Yeah, we could get one of those uh, make your own um, greetings cards with the sound clip and attach it to the door. Yeah, oh. so we open the door and we've got like chipmunk as we yeah, people. That'd be all right. That'd be all right. That'd be great. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is so uh, I got to give it to the English. Yeah, solid whiskey. The winner. Solid whiskey. Pretty good. Do they spell whiskey with an E? God, no. <laughs> I, I would I, I would be so upset if they did. I know. I'm already upset that we're leaving Europe. That would be the last... Ugh. Like I would I would basically it's, no longer refer to myself as English. I would go to some kind of reform training on my accent. No, it's no longer leaving. What? They're, they're, they're gone now. Oh, fuck yeah. It doesn't feel like they've gone because they went <laughs> and then COVID happened, so we couldn't... Like, yeah. Nothing happened anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're gone. We're not, I'm not European anymore. That's sad. But when this whiskey was made, it was made in the European Union. Yes, this is was. a product of the European freaking Union, guys. I miss it. It's better for it. it. It's better for it. I mean, I know there's potentially good reasons to have left, and I know that it's a, it's not a simple thing, but I don't know. There was something... I, I felt there was something nice about being part mm -hmm. of something bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the whole European Union thing. Oh. But... Then again, that's why I'm not a politician. I stick to drinking whiskey. Yes. So if you have other ideas, that's great. Please don't like Twitter blast me with why I'm an idiot. I don't care that much. Okay. I mean, I do, but I don't. I more care about this whiskey. Yeah, that's fair. With this whiskey, which is available right now, Ooh. right this very second at Strathlega.com, we only have two cases. I have a feeling I'm going to need to pull the other two because uh, there's two more in the warehouse. Because um, yeah. this is... <coughs> With how quickly the Worsi Horse disappeared? Yeah, th th yeah, and this is... Wait, did I say that fast enough? Worsi Horse? Worsi Horse. Worsi Horse. Worsi Horse. Worsi Horse. Worsi Horse. Um, yeah, uh, because the Worsi Horse was fantastic, and I have to give it to them, potentially slightly better than this. Yeah. Uh, so look forward to trying it. It's really, really good. This I is will. also really, really good. Like, this head. This is great. Um, but this is also quite a bit cheaper. Like, 60 bucks, 70, 80 bucks cheaper. What? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. is, what uh, is this? this? is normally 166.87, which means with our classic um, uh, introductory discount, which still doesn't actually make any financial sense, but yeah, take advantage because we're fools. Uh, you can get it right now for 146.87. Under 150 bucks. Under 150 bucks. Or 61 parts a million cask strength. What's the uh, actual age statement? Eight-year-old whiskey? Eight-year-old, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah, that's that's, that's mad. That's, that's frankly mad. Oof. I mean... That's actually only, like, we can't get the English Whiskey Company official bottlings here. They're, they were released um, in the uh, the dreaded spirit release or something a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, you can pick them up in a couple of BCLs. I've tried them. They're not that good. It's not hmm. English Whiskey Company. You make great spirits, but you don't quite... You've not quite got the knack of how to present them yet. Um, I guess... Ian was around for, you know, first couple of years or something, showed him how to distill, but wasn't around when it came to bottling. Yeah. Um, so they're not quite there with the presentation yet. I think we've got some work to do, but their whiskey, as we can see in single cask form, is phenomenal. Mm. This is only about, like, 15 bucks more than, like, the regular 46% piece of English whiskey company. Mm. That's insane, seeing as it's, like, double the age and yeah. cask strength single cask. Basically, what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, is this has the, the Bradshaw seal of approval, and you should buy this freaking whiskey, because it's really good and very approachable in, like, in, in the, uh, in, in the pocketbook. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh. So, thank you, uh, thank you, Jay, for helping me put this together. Thank you, Brett, for helping present. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Fontana, for believing in um, the the concept that me and Jay worked on and letting us continue this Blackadder. Um, I, like I said, we're currently the only place in BC where you can get these whiskeys. Actually, damn it, I can say one thing better. The English Whiskey Company, um, we are the only place in Canada. Ooh. Actually, I think North America. Wow. I believe we're the only place in North America with this whiskey. That's, that's we're definitely entire, the only place in Canada. That's an entire continent. I know. Um, and there's only, there's 12 bottles, well, 11 bottles, I should open one. Uh, 10, because I'm buying one. <laughs> Nine? Maybe? <laughs> we'll find out. Um, there's, there's only a few bottles available right now at the Strath. We, we can get 12 more from the warehouse, and then that's it. It's yeah. gone. 
Um, hopefully we'll be able to get some more cool English whiskey company from Blackadder in the future though because that's cool yeah. so yeah thank you for, uh, to Fontana for supporting uh, our vision on um, really giving Blackadder the acknowledgement it deserves they're, they're not good at tooting their own horn um, they, they just make great whiskey and quietly let people drink it um, so that is that is what we are taking on with this whole mm-hmm. snake pit thing uh, that is our design um Brett's well on board with it, I know. Oh, absolutely. Uh, hopefully you are too. Yeah. Um, I think the future is strong for Black Hatter in B- here in BC. Um, I'm proud to announce that number three is in the works. We'll be ordering the whiskey again soon, so we're not going to have as long a wait for, uh, for three. Hopefully we'll be able to actually have an in-person tasting for it. Oh, wouldn't, where, that be nice? wouldn't it be good? Uh, we're going to have some more of the Black Snake. We're going to have uh, some more of the uh, the blended stuff. I think we even have a heavily peated version of the Red Snake. Really? Yeah. Ooh, so maybe not in nice. three, but definitely coming up. Yeah. We've got some peated whiskey. We've got some island whiskey. We may even have some Isla. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, thanks for joining us for this Black Adder Snake Pit number two. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you at the next tasting, which will be, I believe, the August Outturn. Oh, yes. It's coming up fast. And we've got something quite surprising actually we've got several things quite surprising in the yes. August turn it's so long as it arrives because the time of recording not here yet hopefully the LDB gets it in time but whenever it arrives we will be releasing it and it will be very exciting um, Slash of R we'll see you next time stay safe cheers thank you bro thank you mm. thank you Jay and thank you Jay Here's to whiskey kisses, the peachy taste of salmon.